The spark plugs, one of the basic essential components required for combusting gasoline. The Cherokee's service interval on the spark plugs is every 30,000 miles, which compared to a lot of modern vehicles is pretty low. If you've just bought your first XJ, one of the first things you should do is put in a new set of spark plugs because there's no telling how long ago it was done, what kind were used, and if they're even working properly. Thankfully, the job is pretty easy. Okay, it's way too cold here. I'm gonna go to Florida real quick. And just fast travel, yeah, there we go. Okay, sweet. So, if your engine isn't idling properly, has poor acceleration, worse than normal fuel economy, or even stalls at low speeds, the number one thing to check is the spark plugs. This video will cover the replacement procedure for the 4 liter inline 6 on the 2000 plus models, but it's such a simple task, even easier on the older engines without a coil rail. For 2000 and 2001, the 4 liter has a triple coil electronically actuated rail style ignition system. The coils are each responsible for firing two cylinders in a wasted spark style, and NGK spark plugs are factory requested. When replacing the spark plugs, you might be inclined to upgrade them to platinum or iridium, which advertise a longer lifespan and more efficient ignition. However, the Jeeps don't like anything other than copper plugs, as different metals require more energy to make a spark jump that gap. The ignition coils on XJs aren't designed to run these, and at the end of the video I'll share the story of how my dumbass almost got stranded and fried my ignition coil by using iridium spark plugs. So, to reiterate, only use copper spark plugs. So, here's all the tools we're going to need for the job. Sockets from 10 to 13 millimeter. You're also going to need a 5 8 inch spark plug socket. Various extensions and a swivel joint is going to come in really handy for cylinder 6. If you're new to working on cars, a torque wrench is a necessity. Using this, we can precisely tighten the spark plugs to their exact specified torque. Pliers and a mallet might come in handy. And a spark plug gap tool. Even if the spark plugs are pre-gapped, using this, we can verify they're correct. You're obviously going to need new spark plugs. I have the part numbers for each year and engine listed in this table or linked in the description. When replacing the spark plugs, some might recommend replacing the ignition coil alongside them. I will say though that if the coil is working fine, I'd leave it alone because I've heard bad things about aftermarket replacements. To begin, our first step is to disconnect the battery at the negative terminal. As a precaution, without the battery connected, there's absolutely no chance you can accidentally short something out. So with that quickly done, the next step is to disconnect the throttle cables to move them out of the way and get a little bit more working room. The throttle cable pops off its ball stud, while the cruise control and kickdown cable have to be pulled forward to snap free. Squeeze the tabs on the kickdown cable to release it from the bracket, slide it through, and pop it out of the plastic mount on the valve cover. You can do the same thing for the throttle cable and cruise control, but sometimes these clamps can be pretty hard to get out, especially if they haven't been touched by human hands since the dawn of time itself in 1995. If that's the case, by simply unscrewing three 10mm bolts on the bracket, we can remove the whole thing and route it out of the way. Next, unplug the coil rail connector at the far back near the transmission dipstick by first opening the red lock tab. Because there's no room to fit a camera back there, I'll demonstrate how the connector works with the E-Fan. You slide the red tab sideways and then hold down the main tab and pull the connector off. Now remove the four 13mm bolts holding the coil rail to the cylinder head. You might consider removing the oil dipstick and covering the hole with a paper towel because when you rip out the coil rail there's a chance you could break off the handle and lose the stick to the depths of the engine. The coil rail can be stubborn, but with a firm grasp and a good yank, it'll pop right out of there. Carefully route it around the heater hoses and AC lines if equipped, trying not to bend the rubber boots on the back side. If one of the boots comes off the coil rail, no big deal, just pop it off the engine and plug it back into place. You can do these in any order you want, but I always like to start with cylinder 1 and work backwards. Slide a 5 8 inch spark plug socket into place and crack it loose. After it's initially broken free, you should be able to unscrew it the rest of the way by hand. 
At this point, be very careful not to knock any dirt or debris into the combustion chamber. A professional might recommend using a vacuum to clean off the area before removing the spark plug, but I do not care. Here's the two side by side. As you can see, this old one is from AC Delco. And I'd say that looks pretty damn good for 30,000 miles. It is a little bit dirty. It's got some it's a little bit of buildup on it. Uh, but other than that, it looks pretty normal. It's worn evenly. Gap is only at 45 thousandths as opposed to 35 thousandths. But that's, that's pretty good for 30,000 miles right there. This spark plug could probably have gone on for quite a bit longer before it really needed to be replaced. Compare the old one to the new one and make sure they're the same. And even if you ordered pre-gapped spark plugs, you should check the gap and make sure it's at 35 thousandths of an inch. Put the new plug in the socket and carefully lower it into place. You never want to drop it in as the threads might deform, which is a nightmare I don't feel like exploring right now. Carefully thread it in by hand all the way until you can't anymore. It's important not to use anti-seize on these because NGK spark plugs are made with a special metal alloy that doesn't corrode and anti-seize will mess with your torque specs. The spark plugs are torqued to 27 foot-pounds. On to the next. Slide the socket onto it, crack it free, unscrew it by hand, and inspect it. As you can see, cylinder 2's looks a lot more dry, so... There's less oil leaking into it, <laughs> but uh, it's also wearing evenly. This looks excellent. After verifying this new one is at 35 thousandths of an inch, it can be installed. So carefully line it up and thread it in by hand, then torque it to 27 foot-pounds. Repeat the process for the remaining cylinders, except probably take it a lot slower than this sped up footage to make sure you don't miss anything. For cylinder 6, the swivel joint socket allows you to reach the spark plug much easier. Note that using a swivel joint with a torque wrench will throw off its reading slightly because of the inherent physics of how U-joints work or something. Uh, to properly torque the last spark plug, I was able to fit the wrench in place by just using a shorter extension. Next, inspect the coil rail and ensure each boot has a small metal spring inside of it. These springs rest on the end of each spark plug, so we need to be careful when putting this back on because if a spring doesn't line up, the spark will short to the engine block, and that's honestly pretty scary. What the, uh, what the clicking noise is. Um, yeah, that's, that's not good. Manhandle the coil rail back into place, routing it under the heater hoses and AC lines. Make sure each boot is covering its spark plug, and align the coil rail with the angle of the plugs. Once you feel each boot, and are certain they're all lined up, a firm push on both sides should pop it into place. You'll know it's firmly seated when there's no gap between the back of the bolt holes and the cylinder head, in which case you're ready to put the bolts back in. These are torqued to 21 foot-pounds, but they aren't load-bearing bolts, so it doesn't really matter how tight they are. Snug is fine. Don't forget to plug in the coil rail and slide the red lock tab over. Now, route the throttle cable bracket into place and bolt it down. These bolts go to 15 foot-pounds, but once again, they're not load-bearing, so a good twist of the wrist will be just fine. The throttle cable can be snapped into place and slid through the bracket, and then it just pops on the ball stud. Similarly, the cruise control and kickdown cables hook onto their attachment points as such. Finally, reconnect the battery. The moment of truth awaits, but be sure to rid the engine bay of all your tools and whatnots first. Start the engine. It might run a little rough and may even stall on your first startup because the computer needs to relearn the spark plugs. Just let it idle for a few minutes and figure out what it's doing, and you should be good to go. If it doesn't run or misfires really badly, you might have a bad ignition coil or perhaps something else like a fuel injector might be causing the problem. It's been a few minutes, engine's running good. Now we go for a test drive. It is so nice here. Oh, I can't believe it's snowing in Wisconsin right now. It is 82 degrees here in Florida. I love it. 
after putting in those new spark plugs it seems like the engine's got a little bit more power too so you know pretty nice pretty nice it did not need to be done like I, I was a bit ahead of my service interval and the spark plugs still look fine but I mean they're pretty cheap so may as well you know all right it's been about five minutes and uh, it's like backfiring or misfiring or something check engine lights on you can hear it and feel it sputtering and it sounds like uh sounds like I'm missing a cylinder or two when it idles oh there it goes look at that okay we're not doing we're not doing fourth gear there guy so I'm uh, I'm gonna try to make it to a gas station real quick because I'm in the middle of this town don't want to just stop on the side of the road and you know as is the Jeep is uh, still driving because it's a Jeep it barely idles it's, it's shaking listen listen when I accelerate <laughs> Shit. All right, so I made it back. That was not as exciting as it seemed it would be. It turned out it was just a loose connector back there. Uh, apparently what happened was when I put it back on, the red safety pin was closed, so it didn't go on all the way. And as, you know, as I was driving around, I hit bumps and stuff, the connector came loose, and then it threw that code for the... Uh, misfires and the coil rail not working but as you can hear it's idling perfectly smooth now all i did was plug the connector in properly it's a good idea to take a look at your old spark plugs and make sure they're all worn evenly if one has a noticeable amount less life in it than another that could signify some deeper engine problems you'll want to look into if they all look like this though you're done so write down your mileage somewhere and don't forget to change them again come 30,000 more some say the transition to the coil rail ignition system in 2000 was like the worst thing Jeep ever did as a brand. They hate it. Oh, they're unreliable, etc. Well, let me tell you why they don't suck. I'm here to defend my fellow 2000 plus gang. Uh, firstly, a distributor is a very basic setup. It's simple. A small rotating arm spins around from the camshaft to bridge the connection between each spark plug wire to fire it with a single ignition coil responsible for generating that current. This is an easy thing to work with. It's very easy to diagnose what component might be wrong with it, and distributors are pretty universal in the way they work. So there was nothing wrong with this system, and I think that's why people are upset that they got rid of it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Well, it wasn't really Chrysler's choice. Entering the 2000s, we saw stricter emissions regulations, forcing engines like the 4.0 to undergo some pretty major revisions to keep up with a higher standard for fuel efficiency. A coil rail has three ignition coils on it, each one responsible for firing two cylinders simultaneously. So on the 4.0, that's one and six, two and five, and three and four. The reason they do this is because, for example, when cylinder one is on its compression stroke, cylinder six is on its exhaust stroke. By firing both of them, you ignite the fuel in cylinder one, creating power, but you also ignite the exhaust in cylinder six, which burns any previously unburned fuel. That ensures every last bit of gasoline is ignited before it enters the catalytic converters, which helps them stay cleaner and thus perform their job more efficiently. When the catalysts are clean, the O2 sensors get a better reading of the exhaust gases, which they use to fine-tune the fuel injectors to exact amounts. That very reason is why 2000 plus XJs on average get about 1 to 2 better MPG than all prior years. The coil rail is not only more efficient, but makes more power too. If there is any fuel left in the exhaust stroke, it explodes, and basically you get two power strokes at the same time. This combined with the redesigned intake and exhaust manifold is why 2000 plus XJ 4.0s are factory rated at 193 horsepower and 243 foot-pounds of torque compared to the late 90s models producing 190 and 235. Because a single coil ignition has one coil firing six cylinders, there's a limit to how fast that can fire. But with three coil packs, that effective limit is turned way up, meaning you can rev the engine way higher. Uh, but the 4.0 isn't a high revving engine anyway, and there's a whole bunch of other reasons it can't go past 5,000 RPM. But still, that's a win for the coil rail. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, 
if one coil fails, you can still drive the vehicle. This is what happened to me. So when I first got my XJ, I put Iridium spark plugs in it like pretty much immediately because, you know, I just got the car. I don't know what kind of state the spark plugs are in. May as well put in some new ones. And, you know, I was reading online about how Iridium are the best spark plugs because they last the longest, you know, and they have like the best, most efficient ignition or whatever. So I put some Iridium spark plugs in, but I didn't know that XJs weren't supposed to have them. So at first it ran fine. You know, it started up rough the first startup, I remember. But the computer learned the spark plugs, and it ran fine for, I don't know, like two weeks or so. <laughs> After about two weeks, it would start to run rough at idle. It would have, you know, a sporadic idle. It didn't really stay at a consistent 750 RPM. And as time went on, it progressively got worse. You know, sometimes when you'd slow down, the engine would drop way down to, like, 300 rpm and then it would catch itself you know that sort of thing and as time went on it got worse and worse and so one day i'm coming off the interstate you know i'm going down the off ramp and the check engine light starts flashing misfires on cylinders one and six i would eventually find out from the scan tool come to the stoplight at the end of the ramp and the engine just shuts off so here i am off the interstate the engine just died on me at this point in my jeep career i was not at all well versed in cars i didn't really know anything at this point replacing the spark plugs was like the first like actual job i did entirely by myself on the jeep aside from the sway bar links so you gotta bear with past wayman here because he didn't really know much but anyway i restarted the engine and it thankfully started but it was misfiring really badly like it was stumbling it was shaking it, so it was not happy at all here's the thing though I drove it home. I drove it like seven more miles with it misfiring terribly horrible like this. And uh, so I got home and I did some more research and I found out that, you know, iridium spark plugs are the problem probably and I destroyed my ignition coil. So then I put a set of copper spark plugs in it and I got a new ignition coil. I believe it was from AC Delco. So if anybody actually needs one, uh, AC Delco has been good for me so far. But yeah, aftermarket coil rails, I've heard bad things about them. But anyway, the point of this story is, if I would have had a single coil ignition with a distributor, frying the only coil would have left me stranded. Because the rail style has three coils, right? I fried the coil that was responsible for firing cylinder one and six. So running on four cylinders with a dead coil pack is a lot better than not running at all. And Yes, I know, I was I was dumb for putting Iridium spark plugs in the end. You know, I, I was a noob. I learned my lesson. We all start somewhere. So, although the coil rail makes changing spark plugs trivially more difficult, I'll always stand by in defense of the 2001 Cherokee. With that said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.